Jerome Spann. Of course, I'm here to tell you about our sponsor today. And our sponsor is, of course, and will forever be longstanding. Hey, mind, mind you, he don't give me no money, but this is my man's. I got to hold him down. It is Swopes Athletic Recruiting and Scouting. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, Swopes is out here trying to change lives. He's trying to help get these young athletes into college each and every week. Every day he dedicates a lot of time to this. This man has a serious, serious passion for helping others further their education and further their lives in a lot of great ways. They are on Facebook. Make sure you look up Swopes Athletic Recruiting and Scouting. Swopes is spelled S-W-O-P-E. S. It is ran by Mr. Nathaniel Swopes Jr. He is the man in Houston, if y'all don't know. But yes, make sure you go check him out if you're trying to get your kid into school, hell or hell. If you're even a kid here that's thinking about going into school and you want to try and keep playing, keep your athletic career going, make sure you go check out Swopes Athletic Recruiting and Scouting. He is the man that is going to help you keep that dream going. So make sure you follow them on Facebook and you can get right a hold of Mr. Swopes there. He will help you get into college and keep your dream going for continuing to play your sports. So again, people, Swopes Athletic Recruiting and Scouting. Check it out now. Help change some kid around you that you know his future, or hell, even your future. Yeah, yeah, Enigma in the house. My man Jay Span, Titan Studios. It's called From the Heart. Keeping it real is what all the song's about. Never selling your soul. Always staying true to yourself. All right, ah, uh, yeah. Check it out. Money, money, cars, but we never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the heart. Yeah, money, money, cars, but we never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the start. Man, money, money, cars, but we never get you far unless you're gonna spit it from the heart. Yeah, money, money. Man, welcome back to your favorite weekly sports show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is ITC Sports Ball, and I am your man, Jerome Spann. And of course, I'm here with my main man. We've been doing this since day one. Daryl's got the Sunday off, has some, uh, the Saturday off, excuse me, has some things come up. So it's just me and that main man, the originator. He is that hot take spitter, the man who rips like Dylan spits. He is the modern day Ali on the microphone. When he steps into your home, all your ladies is gone. He is that man. Hey, you know, it's your boy Mace. I'm ready to go. And of course, we are back. Start of season. The new season here a little bit later than we wanted to but i was moving and y'all got to give me some grace because i was moving and i was tired and i had stuff to do that combination equals no sports ball okay <laughs> all right this just doesn't work and your boy was in there letting the casino take my money but you know we we came back we broke even they didn't yeah, they didn't get me they didn't get me yeah. As long as you came out in the green, you're good. Listen, you're I, like, I can, black listen, green, I, can you're good. I can walk out of there with my head held high. They didn't take me for all I had. <laughs> Solid matters, y'all. The solid matters. But of course, we are back and we have got to get right to football because yes, it's football season. We're sorry we missed y'all for the start, but like I said, stuff life happens sometimes, people. Y'all get it. But regardless. Gotta start this week here with the Thursday night football game that we all saw there with the Eagles getting the victory over the Vikings. Mace, it's looking like all the luck is turned around on the Vikings after last year, getting basically every break to go their way for the course of the whole season, which is something we predicted, right? It was going to go the other way this year. So how do you feel about what you saw transpire on Thursday with the Vikings? How are they going to move move forward here? Now that they're off to an 0-2 start, you know, historically you get off to an 0-2 start, you basically have next to no chance of making the playoffs. And how do you feel about how the Eagles have gotten off to this season here? Um, so for the Vikings, um, I think it'll be one of those situations where the team gets better as the year goes on. Um, I feel like they might be one of those um, uh, deadline day trade teams. They may um, look to move some disgruntled veterans, but um, this is about how I figured they would go. I mean, Jefferson is, is – unstoppable but there's nothing else around him there's no other complimentary player i mean jordan addison you, you how much can you really expect from a rookie to give you 
And um, like you said, the defense in that in that secondary in particular, like somebody's got to step up and they can't really stop a nosebleed and um, just switch over to the Eagles, like to to the Vikings, like discredit. I mean, the Eagles haven't really looked that good on offense in these two games that we've seen uh, just yet. Um, um, defensively, like I said, it's the, that, that front four carries that defense. I mean, it, it's more evident in week two when you have a Jefferson able to go off. I mean, if it wasn't for a touchback rule, they'd probably win that game. So um, both teams are probably doing are, are doing what I expected them to do, but um, – Hopefully, hopefully the the Vikings' fortunes change over, man. Because Jefferson is too good to be on that sorry of a team, man. We're about to we we are probably about to witness a receiver break. Maybe the receptions and the yard or receiving yards record in one season, and his team will probably win six games, maybe. Yeah, I gotta say you're. Uh... Your assessment of the Vikings is pretty on. I know some people will say, oh, man, you guys ain't going to ain't gonna come in here and give Kirk Cousins his credit. He played pretty good. Okay, look, we know he played good, but it's exactly what we told y'all over and over and over, which is his numbers feel hollow consistently because who won the game? It wasn't Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. So I think you may be right, though, Mace. I mean, Jefferson is off to an outstanding start. I mean, in both games, he's had over 100 yards. Thursday alone, he had 11 for 159, which is insane. Like, we, it's insane when you think about the fact that he didn't get a touchdown out of that. And there were four <laughs> touchdown passes that night thrown by the Vikings. So it's pretty wild. I will say this. This goes back to exactly what me and you were talking about when we did the division previews and when we did the X Factor talk. Somebody in that Viking secondary has to step up. Them boys got to do something because good Lord almighty, do they look inept. I mean, look, Philly was trying to give them the game. Jalen Hurts played probably his worst game in a, in a arguably it was probably as bad as his game against, I think it was Buffalo after he got hurt. But when he's, when he's been healthy, this is probably his worst game in, since his rookie year with Philly? Oh, yeah. So he was trying to give them a game. They The, the Eagles looked terrible. But yet the Vikings couldn't take advantage of all that terrible. They just decided we're going to be just as terrible and turn the ball over and not be able to, you know, score points on drives when we have turned the team over. We just pissed on our leg over and over. So – that Viking season, I think you may be right. We may end up seeing that anomaly of, of JJ breaking both the receiving record, the receiving yards record, and the receptions record in one season with a team that's going to have a losing record, which is absolutely wild. Um, now, as far as the Eagles go, what we've seen in these first two games, Mace, it is troubling if you are an Eagles fan. That team does not look nearly as dominant as they did up front. I mean, I, I understand. A lot of people will say, hey, they still won the games. And, yes, we, we respect that. We we understand that. Well, buddy, last year they was road grading people. This year it looked like everybody was like, baby, we know what y'all are doing. We ain't scared. What's happening? So they're going to have to make some adjustments and get A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith more involved in that offense and can't be so run-based right now because everybody's expecting the run from them. Well, well, it's – um. It comes down to um, the play calling because um, this is about what the Eagles offense looked like when Nick Sirianni was calling plays before, um, was it Gannon? He was the offensive coordinator, right? Or was it the, no, Gannon was a no, defensive Gannon coordinator. Gannon was the defensive coordinator. The offensive coordinators in, in um, Indianapolis right now, when he started calling plays, I can't think of his name. I don't want to try to butcher it. Throw some random name out there right now. Um, that oh, offense, Shane Steichen. Yeah, Shane Steichen. Steichen. When it. Steichen start calling plays, that offense looked markedly light years ahead. And this is probably going back to from time to time, 
play calling matters. And in this situation, you can tell it matters. And um, this was probably my concern with the Eagles going in is people don't realize just how important um, a coordinator's uh, influence can be. I mean, obviously, they should be calling plays, setting up scheme, blah, blah, blah. But some people's approach to the game is a lot different than others. And you can tell that Steichen and Gannon, their approaches to football made the Eagles a lot better offensively and defensively. Because, I mean, outside of that front, outside of that front four on defense, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say Slay is washed. We have He hasn't reached washed territory, but he's reached washed age. So, I mean, if he falls off a cliff, it's kind of expected. But yeah, um, um I, I would say we're seeing exactly what we predicted, though, out of the Eagles, which is they were going to have regression, especially on that defense, because they lost some pieces, and they're depending on young guys to fill those roles. I mean, Kobe Dean didn't even play on Thursday, you know, so it's just one of those things where that that team was bound to take some steps back. We'll see what happens, though. They still have gotten off to a 2-0 start, right? So the season's going well for them. They're still ready to go, ripping and roaring. Historically, right, you start off 2-0, you usually have a pretty good season. Um, it leads you into, you know, next week, and they get a, you know, a long week off here, so that should help them do some scheming, do, you know, change it up. Maybe things will get better after this week or not. Or maybe this is just the Eagles team that we're going to see this year, considering last year, they played a very, very clean, consistent brand of football. And it generally, it doesn't go like that for you two seasons in a row, right? Like you may not be a turnover machine as a team, but you're not going to be as clean as they were last year. I think they had, what, what was it, like under 15 total what turnovers? Was I, think, I would the say, season? yeah, Jalen Hurts really didn't he didn't give the ball away very often. So that's why that's why people made such a big deal out of those out of that playoff fumble because it's like he was so secure with the ball, even in the run game. And speaking of his run game right now, he's taking too many hits. Between week one and week two, hey, my man is out there. Did do you I don't know how he's gonna keep up like that, man. Um, he's not it's not necessarily the amount of hits, it's the the contact that he's taking. Like he's trying to lower his shoulder on people. That ain't gonna turn out too good for you. At some point, it's going to turn out bad. And I don't know who I don't know who the Eagles backup is, but they probably should be uh jumping in that playbook a little bit more because uh, my boy ain't gonna last the whole season taking hits like that. Yep, gotta be smart. Well, we got to get moving here into the games for this week here and starting with the early Sunday games. We have got – it's a lot of um, – there, there's some big games this week, Mace, for sure, for sure. So we might as well start with one of the bigger games of the week, and that is Bengals and Ravens. Honestly, Mace, I can say I don't think either team came out and had an impressive performance week one, right? I think you could argue that the Ravens' defense – was impressive because they they were able to still make some plays, get some stops, even with Lamar turning the ball over the way that he was, right? But Cincinnati, they looked absolutely inept week one. I mean, I think this that week one performance was the ultimate what we've been saying about Zach Taylor on this show for about two and a half seasons now, which is that the Bengals have been winning despite his coaching despite him not being this offensive genius that he was supposed to be and all of that, right? Like they have been winning because their talent, their GM has just done that great of a job getting those pieces together. But I think week one is going to be a lot of what we see this season out of the Bengals where it's going to be boom or bust because they still got holes. They still don't protect Joe Burrow. All that being said, Mace, who you got this week? Um. It wouldn't be football without the Ravens having a um, injury report the size of a CVS receipt. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Ronnie Stanley, and they have a few other guys out right now. I mean, I don't know what's I don't know what's going on out there in, in 
in Baltimore. I mean, we've heard the we've heard former players or players that are on other teams, all this stuff talk about their um their training staff, their conditioning coach. Listen, bro, somebody ain't lying. And I don't and I don't think it's the former players, because every year somebody in Baltimore is on the is riding the pine because they hurt. Um, but with all that being said, man, I think this I this might snowball for um for Cincinnati, man. I um because they're they're very that team is very um confidence based. They're one of those teams that wear their swagger on their sleeves. They 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 assume they can out athlete you instead of out scheming you, but um, I really I expect Baltimore to come out with this. I think Lamar will will have a cleaner game. Um, they obviously I think they'll be the better coach team. Um, I think they can match them point for point, weapon for weapon, and um, yeah, I I, I think this might kind of snowball early for Cincinnati. Um. They made the mistake of disrespecting their opponent, but that's just kind of who they are. So I don't see it getting better for them anytime soon. I got Baltimore. This is easy for me. This is a Baltimore all day. Look, for as much as um, as much credit as we want to give that Bengals offense, let's talk about the just the raw numbers from last week. Joe Burrow was 14 of 31 for 82 yards. Joe Mixon, 13 carries for 56. Okay, Jamar Chase, five catches for 39. Mixon, three for 17. Irv Smith, three for 17. Boyd, two for 10. T. Higgins, zero for zero. Mm. I just named you like all they big money players on offense, and not a now one of them did anything. Now let's talk about that defense. That defense couldn't stop a mother freaking nose lead. They had the likes of Elijah Moore, David and Joku out there catching passes on them, like these boys were some all pros. They had they had that, Deshaun Watson pointing to the sky because he was having a good time out there. They lost on twenty nine pass attempts from Deshaun Watson. You know why? Because that dude that used to make all their calls and checks in the secondary is now in Atlanta making plays. Oh, yeah. This is what me and Mace told you. They were about to be dependent on some young guys in that secondary. And usually it does not go well when you depend on young guys in the secondary like that. So for me, easy all day. No way the Ravens offense has that many turnovers and looks that inept. You know, they, they didn't really look inept. They looked sloppy because they were turning the ball over. They were moving it, but then turning the ball over. I don't think they looked that sloppy two weeks in a row. Easy pick for you, Bengals. The Bengals are losing. Good luck to y'all for the rest of the season here, because like (laughs) I say, when you start off 0-2, baby, that usually means you're in for a rough one. All right, so moving forward here, we have got Seahawks versus Lions in Detroit. Mace, we saw the Lions come out in that um, opening night game against the Chiefs and get that big dub there. We also we also saw the Seahawks last week having some real trouble. They were already getting a lot of injuries, especially on the offensive line. I think what both tackles ended up going out over the course of the game. They're now going up against a Detroit team that we saw was giving that Kansas City Chief offensive line problems. So how do you see this one going? You know, I'm I got Detroit here. I think they're going to keep the train rolling. Um the other caveat to that is um, Detroit's, like I said, with, Jared Goff is not bad unless he's under pressure. Under pressure, terrible. Absolutely terrible. His numbers say he's terrible. But who on that, who in that Seattle front seven is going to get any pressure? Now, they, they, they have a solid secondary. We can we can sit here and talk about Wolin, uh the rookie, um, and um, I, I don't think Quandre Diggs gets a, a, enough credit as a safety as he should. But um, I just think Detroit, like I said, Detroit's too gritty to to lose to a team that can't um, that can't put pressure on their quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Their offensive line is going to control this game. 
Um, they're going to make – I really feel like they better make a concerted effort to get Jamari Gibbs the ball because he is hands down the fastest dude in the entire – on the entire field. I mean, I'd be interested to see if Olin could catch him. I don't think so. That's just me personally. But – um. He, you can tell there is just something different about it. It's there's 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 a lot of times these dudes are fast, but they're not football fast. Jamari Gibbs is that that young man is is I'm excited. Absurd. I'm He's I'm absurd. tuning in. I'm tuning in to Detroit games just to see Jamari Gibbs carry the ball. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. The one thing I would add in here while you were talking about pressure. There's two teams playing this week that both lost last week. That sure as heck could have used that Jalen Carter guy who's over there balling <laughs> in Philly, bro. So could use him. But uh, yeah, I, I, you said it all for me. I don't think I need to, you know, <laughs> say the same thing again. I, I'm picking the Lions for the exact same reason. I think it's going to be hell for Geno Smith in that pocket this week. So because I mean, we we'll saw it, man. Aiden Hutchinson had old dude out there uh, lining yeah, up. What did he say? He, he was lining Taylor up as a slot heart. receiver? He, bro, he, he was lining was. up as a slot receiver, bro. <laughs> he was, bro. That man was – and he was false starting like every down, and the refs didn't call it till like the fourth quarter. I was oh, watching wow. this man live and be like, wait a minute, that's a false start. Hey, that man started way early. But, yeah, so Hutch is probably about to have him a crazy game this game. But moving forward here, we have got Colts at Texans here. You got to say, Anthony Richardson looked pretty pretty good last week, but I think that was a product of the scheme that they were running to. It was a lot of yards after the catch. They weren't really asking him to do much of make some reads, throw it down the field, right? Like it was more, hey, let's hit him quick. Regardless, they looked, um, they looked pretty good. I think, honestly, they probably – they could have won that game last week if Richardson doesn't get hurt. I think they have a chance because they were rolling and they would look like they were probably going to get into the end zone again, but then he got hurt. And when you got to put in Gardner Minshew, that's never a good day. So Jaguars, though, I mean, the Texans, excuse me, the Texans, they came out and them boys, they said, D'Amico, we got you, bruh. They, I, I mean, if, if we're going to give somebody performance of the week in my mind, for me, it'd be the Texans defense last week. They were making, they were creating turnovers. They were making big plays. They were stopping the Ravens offense when they needed to. So D'Amico's going to have them boys playing. Also, Will Anderson. Oh, my God. He looked stupendous, too. Listen, bro. Will Anderson, it, it, he he is proving the Texans right by trading what they needed to to go get him. Demi Listen, I think me, like I said, me and you were both right in the draft. Like, you were, you were. All the all everything coming out of Houston was D'Amico said he needed Will Anderson and they needed a quarterback. They got both. I'm going with I'm going with uh, Houston here. Um, I'm I'm in that deep, bro. What D'Amico Ryan's has done just with just with the confidence of that defense because I mean that's a young defense too. Let, let, let's not get get us wrong here, like. They have enough veterans to keep the young guys in check, like to keep them consistent and on their game. But that's a that's a young defense. That's a young that's a young team in total. But um, yeah, man, I got Houston here. They they're gritty. Yeah. Um. I just don't believe in the Colts. I can't do it. I think they got very fortunate with playing a Jacksonville team that has a lackluster defense. I mean, look, Mace, you want to talk about a team that they didn't improve the unit that they needed to, which their unit is probably somehow worse than they were last year. Jacksonville's my pick all day. Their defense is atrocious to me. Atrocious. They should have shut the Texans out, had them basically have under 100 yards of offense because the if we're talking talent-wise, right, there's supposed to be a big gap between those two, but Houston was competing with them boys for a while. So 
I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Texans here. I just don't trust the Colts long term. I don't do that. Yeah, it's man, it's foolish. um, I yet. Yeah. I mean, we not we're not at Jacksonville right now. We're gonna get to them, but I know their GM is punching the air every time he watches Aiden Hutchinson play. I know it. I just know it. And them boys fell in love. They, they fell in love with the combine numbers. Actually, that's right where we're going next. Chiefs at Jaguars. We saw how the Chiefs season started off. We said we just talked about the Jaguars, right? And their performance, you know, kind of being a little up and down last week against the Colts. So, Mace, who you got? I got the Chiefs here. Um, it's pretty easy. Travis Kelsey is coming back, so there'll be some consistency in the past game again. Uh, Chris Jones will be back, so that'll be hell for uh, Jacksonville's offensive line. Um, I think they win this one pretty comfortably, too. Uh, for me, I'm going Chiefs. I don't trust the Jaguars. Don't trust them. Not at all. Kelsey and, and, and Chris Jones is back, like May said. This is an easy one for me. Them boys is going to be pissed off after they lost last week, and they're about to take it out on the Jaguars. It's bad timing for the Jaguars to play them because oh, yeah. they'll probably still score some points. They'll probably put up still like 28 because that Chiefs defense isn't going to necessarily lock you down, right? But uh, yeah, they Pat might this drop game. 40 on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pat it, might put 40 might on you, man. Yeah. So moving forward here, we have got, got – Four more games in the noon hour here, so we'll hit up these. I'm going to save the Bears for last because I know I'm going to rant about them. So, saving them. But next we have got Packers at Falcons. Mace, we saw what the Packers did last week. They came out. The uh, they did they handled their business thoroughly against the Bears. They beat them in both the run and the pass. Their defense seemed to have been playing at a pretty good level, especially on the downs that Rashawn Gary got to play. Um, Jair Alexander decided to show up for week one. You know, he, he seems like he might be back in form. He seems like that, you know, the he's fully healthy from the injury that he had yeah. last year. He seems like he, he's back in his form. All that being said, we also saw um, the Falcons last week be utterly unimpressive. I don't think it, anybody can try and tell me that um, Desmond Ritter was, was impressive in any way last week when – Drake London had zero catches for zero yards. Pitts had under 100. I think Bijan had under 100 total yards for the game. It's like you got all these weapons around you, brother. You got to do something. You got to figure it so, out. Yeah. So all that being said, Mace, um, who do you got this week? Packers at Falcons. Uh, I got the Packers here just for all the points you just made. Um, Atlanta's got to figure out how to use their weapons because there is no – you. there is no reason – that Drake London and Kyle Pitts and even Bijan, they're, they're matchup nightmares for whoever's on them. If you have to figure out, you have to make an effort to get these boys the ball. Their offensive coordinator needs to be up day and night trying to figure out how to get these young, these young men the ball in 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 one-on-one -on -one situations in space, all of that. This man should not be sleeping at all until he figures out how to get his playmakers the ball because they have some serious talent in the skill position but have no idea how to use it so i got the packers here yeah i hate to say it for me it's, it's very easy packers they're not a mess right now look this i understand and i'm gonna say this people i there there's some bias here at play for me having drake london on my fantasy team and getting zero points out of him last week but regardless even if he wasn't he had one target last week one that is unacceptable for one of your top three offensive players to get one target that's absurd i don't care who the hell you are that recipe is a recipe to get you fired by week seven. Oh yeah that's the, that. So Atlanta's offensive Arthur coordinator Smith, you should, figure it out. Yeah, Atlanta's offensive coordinator should be like, my job is on the line in week two. Like it, this is how he needs to be thinking because he's like, say, you have Kyle Pitts out there. Hey, I know another offensive coordinator that should be thinking that way too. We're gonna get to him in a minute. <laughs> All right, moving forward here, we've got Raiders 
at Bills, we saw the Raiders come out and have a very hard fought game against the Broncos, right? I mean, it, it, in the games that they went that they win this year, they're probably going to look a lot like what that Raiders Broncos game looked like low scoring their defense having to do a lot of the work for them, right? All that being said, regardless, they won. Jimmy G looks, you know, good in um in McDaniel's system. But I, I, I don't know if I necessarily even trust that team because, again, they were playing the Broncos. So, <laughs> But they are playing the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo this week, and we saw Josh Allen come out and lay a poop of a game. Let me tell you for all – hey, look, man, I've been trying to warn y'all for fools who didn't want to listen to me when I was telling y'all about Josh Allen and these damn Bills for the past two seasons. I've been trying to warn y'all that they is frauds. They lost to a Jets team that had no quarterback because their quarterback was Zach Wilson. They're frauds. All that being said, I'm going to make my pick first on this one because I'm picking the Bills because they're more talented. And if they lose this game, Mace, woo, Doug McDermott, you better start being worried about your job, player, because somebody going to be held responsible for the great white hype of Josh Allen not getting to the playoffs this year. And it ain't going to be that roster. And I don't know what is going on up there in Buffalo. Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. It's very simple. They ask Josh Allen to do way too much, and he can't handle the pressure. They've got no run game. Still, um, the defense just kind of – I don't know if it's a combination of age and overhype or or scheme. Like what? I don't know what's going on with that defense. If you look at that defense, man, that they, they got ballers everywhere, but they not balling. I'm not even going to criticize the defense, Mace. You know why? You know why I'm not going to do that? Why? Mace, they gave up 22 points, bro. You should be able to win. When the offense is supposed to be the leading unit on your team, you should be able to win with 22 points, bro. I'm sorry. True, like, true. That, you, your defense did its job. That means they didn't even let them in the end zone three times, Mace. Not even three times. Come on, baby. You got to win with that. Like I said, man, it's re- it, honestly, it really is on Josh Allen. Um, I don't know. Is there, does he not have any sort of um, accountability? Because he plays like he doesn't have any accountability. He plays like he knows, regardless of what his, of what his stat line looks like, he still got a job. Josh Allen play like can't nobody touch him in that in that building. Well, Mace, how's he gonna have accountability when everybody was crowning him the MVP before he even won one? I mean, everybody was saying he was as good as Pat Pat Mahomes. Before he had even gotten to a in Super Bowl. Hell, he has he even been to, he ain't even been to a conference championship game. No, he he was at he was, no, he has not. He has not. Nope. No, they lost in the second round each time. Because yep. they've never been to one seed. So yeah, it's it's um that team is too good to have him turning the ball over the way he does. Like like people are are, are calling for for the Bills to go out and make huge roster moves but like two years ago we were crowning gabe davis the best number two receiver in the league you know what i'm saying like what, what happened to that? Was, we would know sports <laughs> like, ball like what what happened to that i mean like i said you still don't have you still don't you you went out and got a, a second tight end when you already had a tight end like who's making the decisions out there i don't look I, i'm gonna say this they have made Two moves in the last two off seasons, they made zero percent sense to me. Number one, you wasted all that Miller paying Von Miller, uh, all that money paying Von. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying Von's a bad player. He was not what they needed. They needed to get some better offensive linemen so they could get a better run game. But what they decided to do was, well, we'll piss away our money on Von Miller, and then to compound it. Like you said, we're going to go draft a tight end with an early pick instead of getting an offensive lineman, which is a clear position of need for us at the time. 
instead of getting that, we're gonna go get another tight end for what, bro? I say, what? Y'all just, didn't y'all just pay Dawson Knox? Oh, Why yeah. are you going in and drafting another tight end? What sense does that make? So the Bills better get it together quick. Look, I'm telling you this. I'm picking the Bills here to win. But I also think it is very, very easily likely that they lose this game. Because I could see Max Crosby going crazy and sitting in Josh Allen's lap all game. Yeah, um, and... I think that that is the reason why I'm going to go with the Raiders here. Um, Max Crosby is is going to make it complete hell for Josh Allen, and um, we might even get a Tyree Wilson siding this game too because the Bills' offensive linemen is are just so bad. It's it's kind of e- it's easy to play defense when you know the other team can't block. Whether it's <laughs> in the pass game or the run game, you just know they can't get it done. Doesn't matter what kind of threats you have out there yep yep we'll see what happens here though with the bills that that should be interesting man that's a big i know it's crazy to say this early in the season that that's a big game a make it or break it type of game for this season but that is because if you can't beat that raiders team oh boy oh y'all in trouble y'all in trouble because uh there's another, a team in your division that's looking red hot and uh, <laughs> there's another there's another team in that division that Bill is look like Bill coaching that defense up again. So better get it right. But moving forward here, the last game in the noon hour before we get to the Bears game here is Chargers at Titans. Now, Mace, last week we got to see the Chargers be the Chargers. Okay, like over and over again, every season it seems like the Chargers just gonna be the Chargers. And then last week, I think a lot of Titans fans figured out real quick, the jig is up with Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> the jig is up, baby. We, we squeezed all the juice we could out of that lemon. and ain't no more coming. <laughs> all that being said, both teams are on one, right? Guy, th- this is a make or break game for everybody's season. Like, you know, I cannot stress to people enough on here. When you start off the season 0-2, you might as well pack it in because you ain't you. This the numbers say statistically you got an itsy bitsy witsy chance of making the playoffs. Okay, and that's even in, including the fact of changing the margins a little bit because you have um, one extra game now. That don't change nothing for you. That don't change it. So, all that being said, though, Mace, who you got this week? Chargers or Titans? Uh, I got the Chargers here. Um, they have to win this game. They have to they have to win this game, or I really feel like their head coach needs to be fired. <laughs> after week two. I'm I'm gonna say it after week two because this team constantly underperforms. I don't care about no injuries, I don't care about none of that. When you constantly acquired the type of talent that they have acquired over the last what two seasons and now you have you're in a situation where your quarterback's money is set and you have now a two-year window to maximize the roster before your quarterback starts chunking your salary cap this this has to be a make it or break it for the chargers or if not staley's got to be up out of there after week two, I'm, I'm he's got to go. He's bad. I don't, I don't disagree with what you're saying. This is another team that <laughs> you lose this game, baby. You got a hard look in the mirror, <laughs> a real, real hard look. Because look, I understand that the Dolphins are still a good team too, but the Chargers' defense is supposed to be good. They gave up 36 to the Dolphins. They gave up th- the Dolphins. We're running and passing on these boys like it was nothing. Two or three for what? Four something, right? When it oh, yeah, something two and chop them up, dog. Y'all supposed to have some good players in your secondary. It's starting to look like Samuel is a bust. We see it, J- hey, J. C. Jackson. They paid you all boy. that money for what? Hey, J. C. For what? He left left 
uh, New England and he forgot how to play football. Man, JC been getting cooked for like a year and a half now by everybody. Yeah, so we will see what ends up happening there. Um, for me, man, I, I'm going to pick the Chargers. But, but you don't feel good about it. No, I don't I feel good about you, it. I can no. see it in your face. You don't no, feel no. good about it. No, no. Actually, yeah, like I really wanted to just say, you know, fucking, I'm doing it. Tighten up, baby. Titans winning. <laughs> <laughs> we doing it. <laughs> I'm going with my gut. I, bro, my gut see, is just the, telling the, me Titans, man. It's telling the me. Tight, bro, Vrabel has that defense. Like, that defense is going to be top 10 regardless. Like, we know this. But if the Chargers have any chance of like if Staley had if Staley wants to keep his job, he's got to win this game. But I I would not be surprised if um Tennessee comes out and wins. Like I it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Like not at all. I'd be like, you know what? I probably should have picked them. But I'm gonna go with Chargers because they have to win. Plain and simple. Yeah, I mean. They better win. Okay, so before I go on my rant and rave here, I'm going to go ahead and let Mace speak his piece on the Bears and Buccaneers. So, Mace, Bears and Buccaneers, tell us how you feel about both teams' performance and uh, who you picking for this week. Because I got a lot to say. <laughs> well, um, this is this is a pretty interesting game. Um, this, one, this one's going to be one of those ones where – Baker Mayfield may look a lot better than he actually is because for for another, like I said, we, we knew the Bears' defense was going to be a real work in progress, especially that front seven. And um, for a team in the Buccaneers whose strength actually is the offensive line, this does not bode well whatsoever. Um, I don't. I'm hoping that the that maybe the Bears their their front seven decides to actually play angry and make some plays, but um, I think the more complete team in this situation right now is uh, Tampa Bay. Um, we we're about to we're about to have Skip Bayless go off because Baker Mayfield is going to look like a real NFL quarterback, and it's going to be disgusting. Because we know he isn't. Um, oh man, I gotta go Tampa Bay here, man. Um, I just from from whatever, I don't know what they're doing in Chicago, man. That you have all this offensive talent, all these weapons, do something with them. And I gotta, I just gotta turn it over to my man's over here because he he's about to give you all the biz. You wait a whole off season to see your football team start the regular season. You wait a whole off season. You go months, right? You go from February into the draft in April, and you're like, "Oh man, we might have gotten some good players." You see the off season moves that your team makes. You start feeling kind of good. You're like, "Oh man, it might not be as bad as it was last year." And let me tell you something, people. That was just as bad, if not worse, than last year. Because at least last year, we knew they was trying to be bad. We knew it. It was a certified fact. Hey, we're trying to be bad, and we're trying to evaluate and see who is a good player on his team. Thought we found some guys. And guess what? All we decided to do was, first off, we're going to start with Luke Getze. You want to talk about guys that should be worried about coaching for their job, Mace? Luke Getze is my number one candidate for that right now. Because let me tell you something. This is the same bullshit that he was doing in the first four weeks of the season last year that didn't make any sense. It did nothing. It made our offense look terrible. Justin Fields was out there putting the team on his back. It shouldn't have to be that way. There is no reason you trade for a number one wide receiver. He gets three targets for the game. There is no reason when you have possibly the best running quarterback in football that when it's a third and inches that you line up with a motherfucking tight end to run a tight end quarterback sneak. There's no reason 
that you should be running in the words of a great football podcaster, YouTuber, says a high school Harry play in the NFL. There is no reason. Now, if you don't get it together, Getsy, I'm going to need to see you about the paint. It's it's that simple for me. I need to see because you didn't make no adjustments in the, when the game happened. You just came out there running the same bull in the second half that you was trying to run in the first half and it wasn't doing nothing. Offense didn't look halfway decent until Fields and them boys was running to hurry up and the Packers was basically saying, hey, man, we keeping everything in front of us. The scheme sucked. The execution sucked. It was all bad. Fields, you too. You got to be better this week too because you hey, Watching that film, you wouldn't, it wasn't all on everybody else. I will say this because I don't want to rant and rave too long. Because boy, hey, look, do you motherfuckers lose mace on Sunday? I'm packing it in for the season on now. It's already over because we ain't got no damn defense. Well, no, we do, but we ain't got no front at all. We have no front four that's worth nothing. Not a player on that front four did anything in that game to impress me at all. Zero percent. Y'all look like trash. But all that being said, if the defense don't start showing some improvement, I'm going to need to see that head coach about to paint real soon, too. Because what the hell is the point, Mace, of having a defensive coach if your defense look trash and he can't even coach dudes up? What's the purpose? Yeah, man. Um, it the one thing that the Chicago Bears was good at last year was running the ball. Like whether it, the the read option worked, they could line you up in in twenty one personnel or, or whatever twelve. They could line you up and run the ball at you. They didn't even look like they could do that. They didn't even have that in their back pocket. So. And I swear to God, Mace, if I have, I need Tevin Jenkins to get back. I know he can't technically come back before week four, right, because they did the injury designation thing. I need him back this week. I, Honest to God, put Carter in at guard. Put Whitehair back at center because Whitehair is a terrible guard, but he is an excellent center. It is the most astounding thing to me. I'm telling you, Mace, he stinks as a guard. Whitehair is not a good guard. He is a great center. Terrible guard. Get Lucas Patrick the hell off the field. I don't want to see that guy take another snap in a Bears jersey ever again in my life. He is one of the worst, worst free agent signings I have ever seen the Bears make. Do you want to talk about a guy that is useless? That is Lucas Patrick. Don't want to see him on the field again. Get, hell, Mace, you know how I felt about Sam Mustafer. I'd take <laughs> Sam Mustafer over, over Lucas Patrick at this point. Ooh, okay. That's rough. That's rough. Because my point with Lucas Patrick, what's the point of even ha having you on the field? Nothing good ever happens when you're there. At least I've seen some good things happen when Sam was out there. I, I don't know. Every time he out there, it's like, oh, shit, here it goes. Here we go again. All that being said, I'm going to pick the Bears. I don't feel great about it. I don't. <laughs> Because, because nothing about that performance in week one should make me feel great about picking them this week. But I'm picking them on a hope and a prayer. Nigga, I'm Bon Jovi right now. I'm living on a prayer. <laughs> it's that simple. I just but hope. Hopefully, we'll have a happier me next week. Because, boy, let me tell y'all something. Because it's 0 2 next week. Hey, y'all gonna be y'all gonna be able to see the steam coming off his head next week. <laughs> just, I'm be... just telling you, don't don't be Owen too. Don't do it. Look, we Midwest in the Midwest here, we nice. But you start effing us over, and that's what them bears would be doing at Owen too. You're gonna see that nice turn on you real quick. We're turning to New York on your ass. You better stop playing. But moving on here, because I don't want to get caught up, because I think we spent enough time there with me ranting and raving about the Bears. Got 49ers at Rams. We I don't even think we need to talk about the 49ers, what they did. They they came out and smacked them boys in the mouth and never let them get up, right? So we know what that is. Oh, okay, hold on. 
in fairness, let me make sure I say this before people try and get on us. We know people, Brock Purdy looked good again. Ooh, big wow. Okay, cool. It's awesome when you're throwing to wide open guys because the scheme has got you wide open guys all the time. Awesome when all when your skill position players are better than pretty much everybody else in the league. Oh, it's Brock Purdy. Okay, cool. So we got that out the way now. So we know what the Niners did last week. That's very easy. The Rams, uh, I think the Rams were a surprising performance for a lot of people. I think most people, including all like most football people, were looking at the Rams and thinking that, hey, they were going to be another tankier this year. So they got a dub last week. So did the Niners. So Mace, who you got this week in this big NFC West matchup? So first I do want to like credit McVay and the Rams for their offensive scheme. I think this um, – gets back to what the essence of McVay can do as a um, play caller. Um, the I hope not. Cam Akers had like 13 rushes for like 27 listen, yards. Mace, I need better than that for my listen, fantasy Cam, team. Listen, Cam, Cam Akers, he, he's looking more bustable every season. <laughs> he's, he's looking more like a bust every season. But um, that team seems to be chugging along somehow, some way with no running game. And we know how devastating McVay can have an offense. When you give him a viable run game, you give him a, you don't even have to give him Todd Gurley. Just give him somebody that can do something. But with all that being said though, man, uh, San Francisco, um, the craziest thing about San Francisco, like usually when offenses move the pocket around, they start pulling guards, tackles, tight ends, and stuff like that. You as a defense feel pretty good about your chances to win that game when they have to try to do all this misdirection to beat you. But um, Kyle Shanahan has made a living off of the misdirection in his offense. He somehow found a way to take the, I'm not going to necessarily say gimmick, but the unexpected and make it expected every play almost. And, And like you said, a, a quarterback like Brock Purdy can be throwing to somebody wide open, and he looks excellent in that process. But um, 49ers look like a juggernaut right now, man. Um, I think that the, the best move this offseason might be Hargraves to to San Francisco. I, that, um, I'm not saying that they were – light by any means up the middle but if you wanted to say that pass rush could get better anywhere you would say it would be between the guards and uh they definitely did that and now you now you're telling fred warner you're telling chavaris ward that now you got another you you're telling them boys that now there's another guy out there getting to the quarterback so your job is that much easier it could be tough san francisco is, is probably going to steamroll them I feel good about this. Easy for me. Niners are about to bring the Rams back down to earth. It's very simple. Very, very simple. So, yeah, uh, we'll keep it moving here with the Giants at the Cardinals. I mean, <laughs> look, you want to talk about uh, – I know I was losing my mind as a Bears fan. Good Lord, I was just happy not to be a Giants fan last week. Let me tell you that much because whoo, 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 getting beat 40 to nothing on opening night at home. Yikes. It's never good. So, Mace, uh, who you got this week? <laughs> you know what? I got the Giants, man, because – at least they still have some talent in positions where it could make a difference in the game. The Cardinals are just in complete. We need a new quarterback mode right now. They are in complete. We need a new everything mode right now. So I got the giants. Hey, at least the Cardinals scored 16 points though. And they had Josh (laughs) Dobbs as quarterback. So, I mean, (laughs) Hey, (laughs) look, (laughs) look, (laughs) I'm just saying, bro. I, I feel you while you are right and what you're saying about the Giants roster. I'm going with the Cardinals because I feel like this is going to be the season that these Giants fans finally had to learn that Daniel Jones is not it. Hey, Daniel Jones got too much money to be not it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm telling you, if I remember the reading correctly, 
he got that Blake Bortles money, which means he could be out about to paint real quick. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens here. But, yeah, I think that – I really think that the Giants are – I think they're going to be a dumpster fire this year. I really do. They should have trade. They should have traded Saquon, gotten some form, and just full on went for the dumpster fire because they Daniel still Jones ain't got a receiver. Going. They still ain't got a receiver. I don't, I don't even know who their receivers are. Bro, we went over this with our boy. With with look, JT, we love you, brother. But we tried to warn your ass about this receiver core. We tried. Oh, oh, we good. We got Darren Waller. Nigga, do you still feel that way? Darren Waller is on the injury report. What you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) He's already on the injury report. Look, Darren Waller lives on the injury report, okay? That is forever where he is at. He will forever be on the injury report. It's that simple. But moving forward here, because I don't want to get caught up with the Giants, because neither of us believes in the Giants at all. So, um. We have got Jets at Cowboys. I mean, it's a pretty easy one. I, I'll go ahead and pick and then let's just lay, lay it out for their mace. Zach Wilson is the quarterback for the Jets. There ain't no way I'm picking them. Zero. Nigga, and it's the Cowboys opener. Hell no. Cowboys about to run them boys out the building. Listen, the Jets. And defense, Mace is going to be fucking unbearable after that. The Jets defense is going to be on the field so much. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if you got a sauce, you got a Quinny. I don't care who you got. Ain't no way that they going to hold up for four quarters with the amount of time they going to be on the field because Zach Wilson going to throw it to us. That offensive line ain't going to hold up. They won't even hold it. They didn't hold up against the Bills. They just had a few more. They just made a few more plays. I mean, I don't disagree. (laughs) And this is easy. Like, it's, I was ready to exercise that Aaron Rodgers devil. I was ready to say, we got to get get past that hump. We got to do it. But Zach Wilson, this is, that's my, that's the opposing quarterback. I'm good on that. Like I said, I don't care how much the same. I'm, I'm, I'm using the same logic I use with the Giants. I don't care how much talent they acquire. Their quarterback is still Daniel Jones. The Jets' quarterback is Zach Wilson. I don't care how much talent they have. Their quarterback is Zach Wilson. We good. Yeah, I don't think nothing more needs to be said there. <laughs> Moving forward, though, to the last of the afternoon games, and that would be Commanders at Broncos. Now, Mace, um, the Commanders start off the new ownership regime with a big win there. You got to say it's a big one because, you know, it, when you start off, first off, at home, you got to get the dub, right? But also when you're playing a team that you're supposed to be better than, you got, you most definitely have to get that dub, right? You cannot, you can't lose to a team that's underwhelming like the Cardinals that's clearly in the tank. So all that being said, I still don't think that they're a very good team right now, um, the Commanders or the Broncos, but I feel like the Commanders have the advantage here because they got that D-line and that defense is something ridiculous. So for me, I'm going to pick the Commanders, Mace, who you got here. I'm going to go with the Broncos here because, I mean, for everything that you said about the the Commanders' defensive D-line, the Broncos are no slouches either. They're – Their um, defensive front is uh, very good, and they also have a talent in uh, PS2. So they have a matchup there with McLaurin that I think is favorable for them. Um, I I think this might be one of those – Matt Carroll has those young quarterback struggles against a team that could put some pressure on them. And I ultimately think that might be the difference in this game because, like you said, both fronts for for both defensive fronts for each team is definitely the strength of their defenses. But I feel like Russell Wilson may be able to handle that a little bit better because he can't be as bad as he was last year. Wait, did you say Mac Carroll? You mean uh, Sam Howell? Is Howell? Is Howell? 
It's yeah, it Howl. is Howl. I thought it was yeah. Carol. I thought it was Carol. I, dude, they first, no, no, I'm not even going to lie to you. You said it and it sounded right to me. And then I was thinking about it. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought it was like Sam Howell. Or yeah, okay. I, 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 I was over here it's looking same, it up at you. Same, well, as you were talking. Different name, same result. Like, this is one of those young. <laughs> different name, same game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, the, the Cardinals really didn't have anything to pressure him with. You know what I'm saying? And now this is going to be – he's going to go into a situation where the defensive front it can put pressure on you and they will put pressure on you. So it may be too much for him early on. So, yeah, like I said, I got to go Denver here. Yeah, I, I'm like I said, it's just for me it's commanders because I think this is a game where they're going to keep pressure on Russell Wilson and especially they're going to give it to him up the middle, which historically has been the worst type of pressure for Russell Wilson to deal with when you can get pressure up the middle. Payne was balling out of that, out of control in that first game. We already know all about, um, see, oh my God. I just Jonathan Allen. And yeah, thank you. Jonathan. I was sitting there seeing him. I was seeing the big black dude sitting there all day and I'm like, I know who this is, but I can't see his name. Yes, Jonathan Allen and Payne have, were out of control in week one. It looks like Chase Young is ready to wrap back up, and we already oh, know. Oh, yeah, he's, he's playing for a contract. Proven. He got a ball. Yeah, and we already know what Sweat is. Sweat is like, hey, bro, you gave me my money. We're going to keep this train moving, baby. What's happening? So that's the only reason I'm going that way. I just think it's a bad matchup for Russell Wilson there. Uh, moving forward, though, we have got the Sunday night game, which is Dolphins at Patriots. Mace, we saw the Patriots defense come out and put out a very admirable, admirable performance uh, week one. Mac Jones and that offense looked a little bit better. They still look like they got a long ways to go there. Um, Miami, we saw what happened, right? They they had that massive game against the Chargers. Their defense still looked kind of underwhelming, even with all the talent that they, quote unquote, have there. All that being said, Mace, who you got this week? I got New England here. Um, Bill is the ultimate gamer, and you know he always keeps something in the bag for his divisional opponents, and I don't think this would be anything different. And like you said, the Chargers defense – or not Chargers, excuse me. The Dolphins defense did not whelm anybody. Like, they were very underwhelming. Um, we, we understand that um, Jalen Ramsey's on the IR, I believe. But still, though, I mean – the rest of that defense still had to show up, and they did it. It it, it was pretty much Tyreek and Tua saving them last week, and um, I feel like Bill just has something for him. Like I, because it's not even like New England looked bad on offense. It was more one of those you don't know where the yardage and the production is going to come from, but somebody's going to get it. So, yeah, man. Like I said, even in in that tsunami or whatever it was against um against um philly last week mac jones still gave him 300 you know what I'm saying? he still gave him an, an efficient 300 so i don't mm -hmm. i don't see why he, he, you wouldn't keep that up and um like i said i just got new england here i feel like bill just keeps something in the bag yeah um i don't disagree with all of that i think it's gonna be a close game but i'm taking the dolphins i think they just end up making a couple big plays there that probably ends up being the difference because that defense did not impress me at all last week. You mean, I, we respect that the Chargers offense is good, but if the Dolphins are really going to be a serious contender in the playoffs, their defense has got to show us something over the course of the season. They got to show us something. Uh, but moving forward to the Monday night games, so again, for all those that don't realize this, got two Monday night games this week. First one we've got uh, the, that's coming on the air is the Saints at Panthers. Mace, who you got here? I got the Saints. Um, they might. I think they might overwhelm uh, Bryce Young. And uh, like I said, we we I felt we knew that that was going to be a struggle all this time. And um, they just got the Saints. They just got a little bit more talent. Yeah, Saints. It's it's a rough year for the Panthers, in which it will be good for my Bears, but. It's just going to be a rough year. We saw the evidence of that last week. It's just going to be one of those. Um, and then the last game of the week, Mace, we got Browns at Steelers. This is a big game for both teams. Big game for the Browns because they can, if they go 2-0, right, they've said, hey, we're here. We're ready to play. We're going to try and compete this year. Big game for the Steelers because the Steelers, man, again, you can't be going 0-2. 
just historically that never works out well for you. So Mace, we saw that the Steelers just got dominated last week, but that was against potentially the best team in football roster wise, right? Do they rally this week against the Browns? Who you got? I don't think so, man. Um, I think that um, that Bengals game was a real wake up call for Cleveland to see like what they could be if they all just got it together. And um, this could be maybe maybe Deshaun he's he's shaking off the rust, so maybe he can give them that give get them over the hump that they need to get over as an offense because the talent like i said we know the talent is there but are they going to keep that are they going to keep that aggression going because we, we i mean we know what miles garrett's going to do um we know what nick chubb is going to give you but once you when you get production out of elijah moore and david and joku in the fashion that they did knowing that amari cooper's just waiting in the cut for for his opportunity and you know they're going to come um for cleveland for the mindset of actually trying to win something this season, they got to win this game. Yeah, for me, I think you are spot on with everything that you said. The only thing I would add is this. We've never really seen where we got to a point in a season where we counted out a Mike Tomlin team. This team goes 0-2, which, by my pick, I think they are going to. I think there's going to be start start being questions asked about Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh that isn't fair because if we're being real, the GM has done a poor job. The GM has constructed th- that roster in both a win now and try and win long term way, which doesn't really work. You got to kind of go one direction or the other. You, both places you have to get the picks right, right, but you can't mesh the two together like that it generally ends up with you just having a slappy roster their roster looks kind of sloppy their offensive line doesn't look like they can truly protect kenny pickett back there they don't look like they can block for Najee harris that's never going to leave time for pickens and uh johnson to get open right i think it's going to be another rough offensive game defense is already going to be without hayward this week because he got hurt last week that means you're depending basically entirely upon TJ Watt and Mika Fitzpatrick to make every play for you guys throughout the course of the game. That's bad luck. I think they're going to lose this game because that Browns defense is going to be all over, all over Kenny Pickett. I mean, look, I think the happiest player in football from the offseason moves has to be Miles Garrett because he's like, oh, you guys can't just double team me anymore. (laughs) <laughs> you got to actually double team somebody else on this team because the Darius will go eat if you don't. Oh, yeah. That that right there was – that may be the game changer. Like I said, like, like I said we, we talked about the Hargraves moves in the offseason. Darius Smith might be right up there with that as a team adding a, a plus player in a plus position. So one of them two is going to ball. Like I would like – it, it's not wild to think both of them could easily end this season with 12 plus sacks. Oh, yeah, easily. Well, Mace, tell the people where to find you. You know, man, Twitter, funky underscore stuff 09, Twitch, twitch.tv slash swaggy mace. Hit your boy up. At Jay Spender, man, everywhere you're going to see my pretty face or you're going to see the ITC logo. Don't you forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell and rate us too. If you only give us four stars out of five stars, I'm forever going to think you're a hater. You don't want that because I'm a really nice guy and I like people. So I don't want to think that you're a hater. But all that being said, people, we are back. We will be back on our weekly game every week now. It's football season. Basketball season will be coming up soon. It's going to be a good time here. Get ready for the ride. We got a whole bunch of stuff coming out for you this year with ITC. Enjoy it. But, yes, this was another resounding episode of your favorite weekly sports show, and that is ITC. Sports ball. I'm going to do it for him. Let me talk to you. Yeah. Yeah.